Ever heard about cargo ships fighting off pirates using water cannons? Sounds a bit surprising, right? Well, it's true. Water cannons, despite not being powerful weapons, are actually quite effective in keeping pirates away. But you might wonder, why not use real guns for protection? The thing is, having guns on board raises a lot of problems, and many ships prefer not to go down that route. So, what do they do? Some ships use super loud speakers that can be really annoying for pirates, even if they wear earplugs. There's also a cool trick with a hose that turns it into a weapon. But if all else fails, what can the crew do to get rid of pirates who manage to get on the ship? Find out more on Superstructures. Commercial ships usually employ a two-layer defense strategy against pirate attacks. The first layer, like having a security camera outside your house, is about discouragement. It doesn't physically stop anyone, but it can deter potential pirates. The second layer, akin to a security gate, focuses on anti-boarding measures to make it harder for pirates to get on board. To discourage pirates, ships may use decoys like dummies to create the illusion of more crew on watch. Lasers can be employed to interfere with pirates' vision as they approach. Increasing speed is another tactic since boarding a fast-moving vessel is much riskier for pirates. Long-range acoustic devices stand out as highly effective tools for discouraging pirates. When the crew spots suspicious boats approaching, they can use LRADs to communicate with them. If communication fails, the LRADs can emit an extremely loud tone, comparable to standing behind a jet engine, directed towards the boat. This can be uncomfortable or even deafening. While you might think pirates could wear earplugs, it's not very effective because sounds can still reach the inner ear through skull vibrations, similar to how bone conduction headphones work. This discouragement might be sufficient for some criminals to abandon their plans. However, determined pirates could resort to shooting and destroying the LRAD, leading to the activation of the second layer of anti-boarding equipment. A straightforward but effective weapon to halt boats involves shooting out a rope that stays on the water's surface and tangles up the engine propeller as the boat crosses over it. This principle can be adapted for cargo ships by using a series of trailing wires that can be extended on the sides and the stern of the ship. If a boat attempts to get too close, these wires have a good chance of stopping them and making them reconsider their actions. A sudden stop like this could pose a risk for the pirates. Water cannons serve as another effective tool to deter unwanted onboarding. The water pressure from the cannons acts as a deterrent for pirates, similar to their use in riot control. These cannons not only discourage pirates but can also fill up an approaching boat, potentially causing it to sink. Some cannons are remote operated, allowing the crew to use them from a safe distance without the risk of being fired upon. Others are fixed but spray water in various directions to impede onboarding while some have rotating heads that constantly spray water on the sides of the ship. Additionally, there's the water curtain, a specially designed sinker weight that keeps the nozzle near the water surface. The restrictive nozzle ensures high-pressure water discharge, making the long hose lash about unpredictably and violently. Getting hit by this pressurized water can be painful, and if multiple water curtains are deployed along the ship's side, it becomes challenging for pirates to climb on board. Another classic anti-boarding method involves the use of barbed wire or razor wire. Rolls of razor wire can be easily brought on deck and swiftly set up when necessary. Alternatively, safety barriers can be attached to the ship's sides to keep pirates at bay. These barriers hinder pirates from securing their ladders into the ship's perimeter. The shape and gap created by the barriers make it challenging for climbers, even with a rope, to overcome them. All the mentioned anti-boarding measures are crafted to safeguard cargo ships from pirates approaching on small boats. However, the scenario of intruders boarding a cargo ship from the sky wasn't anticipated until November 19, 2023. On that day, a helicopter approached the Israeli-owned cargo ship, Galaxy Leader, on a Red Sea shipping route and deposited a group of armed Houthi rebels, along with what seemed like a professional videographer. The rebels caught the 25 crew members off guard taking them hostage. Despite this unexpected situation, could the crew of Galaxy Leader have taken any actions to save their ship? In the event of a hijacking scenario, where attackers have successfully boarded the ship, the crew's best course of action other than engaging in a gunfight is to issue a mayday to alert authorities. Following this, the crew should shut off the vessel and retreat to a safe room that is impenetrable by the pirates. 
Since pirates usually lack the ability to operate the ship and without hostages have no leverage, they are likely to be compelled to leave before the arrival of the Navy or Coast Guard. This strategy relies on denying the pirates control and waiting for professional help to arrive. The hijacking of the galaxy leader by Houthi rebels brought a unique challenge as it involved a surprise attack from the sky, rendering the typical response of seeking refuge in a safe room ineffective. Despite the car carrier having no cars on board, the politically motivated hijackers as of January 2024 have turned it into a somewhat unusual tourist attraction near the coast of Yemen. Comparing this incident to traditional pirate motivations, such as those seen with Somali pirates, reveals distinct differences. Somali pirates typically aim to hold a ship and its crew hostage until a ransom is paid. In the 2008 hijacking of the Ukrainian cargo ship Fina, Somali pirates kept 20 people hostage for four months until a $3.2 million ransom was airdropped near the ship. Once the ransom was received, the pirates left, and the hostages were released unharmed the next day. In the Gulf of Guinea, pirates adopted a distinct approach by focusing on seizing the cargo rather than holding the ship and crew hostage for an extended period. Their strategy involved transferring the captured cargo to another ship through ship-to-ship -ship operations a process that could span up to 10 days. Once the cargo transfer was complete, the vessel and its crew were typically released, highlighting the varied tactics employed by pirates in different regions. To minimize the risk of pirate attacks, some container ships have altered their routes to avoid the Red Sea and Suez Canal due to repeated Houthi attacks in Yemen. As of December 28, 2023, approximately half of the container ship fleet opting for the longer journey around the entire African continent. This alternative route extends the voyage by about a week, incurring higher shipping costs and introducing delays. The decision to stick to the traditional route may result in elevated insurance premiums. While arming the crew may seem like a straightforward solution, legal and practical constraints make it a complex and challenging option. In international waters, merchant ships adhere to the regulations of the flag state they represent. If permitted, they can carry weapons. However, challenges arise when these ships navigate through different ports and countries where firearm possession is prohibited. Apart from legal complexities, the primary role of ship crews is to operate vessels, not to engage in combat with pirates. Drawing a parallel, it's akin to expecting teachers in America to carry firearms for potential school shootings, a responsibility most teachers may not desire. To address these challenges, some ships opt to hire private security companies approved by port state control to navigate pirate-prone zones with arms on board. However, when piracy becomes a major issue, navies step in as the ultimate defense. For instance, during the peak of piracy in Somali waters around 2011, with 212 attacks, the economic toll was estimated at $18 billion. To counteract this, the U.S. and coalition vessels under Combined Task Force 150 actively pursued pirate vessels to deter their activities. On March 18, 2006, Somali boats engaged with the U.S. Navy destroyer USS Gonzalez and the cruiser USS Cape St. George. The pirates fired RPGs and firearms at the American ships, which responded with small-caliber guns. A 50 caliber tracer round from USS Gonzalez set a large pirate skiff on fire, burning it to the waterline. Throughout history, navies globally have played a crucial role in securing merchant routes and combating piracy. In response to Houthi rebel acts on commercial ships and US naval vessels, on January 11, 2024, the US and British forces conducted air raids on targets in Yemen. On January 17, 2024, the United States designated the Houthis as a specially designed global terrorist group, signaling a shift from water guns to serious action against the rebels. Thanks for diving into the fascinating world of maritime security and how cargo ships protect themselves against pirates. If you found this information intriguing, don't forget to subscribe to Superstructures for more captivating insights into the engineering marvels that shape our world. Stay tuned and we'll catch you in the next exploration.